it's an interesting one because there's no job description for this. There's no manual on how to do it. Setting up Team Spectre in the pandemic was the best, worst decision I've ever made. What does it take to go pro? Um, I think we're going to surprise people. I'll put out the watts to sit on the front for a bit. I think imposter syndrome, I personally think it's more of a female thing. At times I fell out of love with racing in a bunch particularly. Somebody still wants me. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think I can be perceived as very serious. There is many, many sleepless nights. I love Josh to bits and hate him to the core. There's one thing which here which is a bit hard to say. My name is Bruce Dalton and I'm the general manager of Team Spectre Racing. I firmly believe from the first time that I wrote it down on a piece of paper and then called up Josh and said, do you want to have a go at doing this with me? Setting up Team Spectre in the pandemic was the best, worst decision I've ever made. I really, really fucking care. What's interesting with, with cycling is that we have a budget that we get at the beginning of the year that lasts us all the way till the end of the year. And then we have no more money. We literally have no more money. And up until that point, everything is just a potential. It's all in the ether itself. That bit I find both fascinating, absolutely shit scary. We're about selecting people that you've never heard of and turning them into something interesting. Me and Josh have been friends for since I was 10. Originally, being totally truthful, we're just bike nerds. We just love bikes. What does a successful year look like? God. I think we're going to surprise people. Wins do matter, so a few of those would be nice. And then some sort of sustainability within the team. I think being a pro to really step up, it's an attention to detail, a commitment to the training and loving the riding, and not going so far that after a year and a half you burn out and you quit and leave the sport. So many people are flashing the pan and very few people stick at it. Without wanting to sound like a complete psychopath, I rarely doubt myself. You know, it's, it's like the hard conversation you have to have a ride. It's like, are you really in a position to be able to step up? Are you really in a position to go pro? They'll probably know it themselves. They've either got the will to do it or they probably haven't. Cycling is a sport that is incredibly rewarding and like cruel at the same time. Having that like will to want to win, that keeps your failure to your minimum, I would say. You need to be hungry to avoid failure, but I think it doesn't really help if you end up being like so obsessed around failing that you never have the opportunity to, to succeed. It is a bit daft. Like, I didn't need to do this. Like we didn't need to do this. This is actually a really good story. I don't know if you guys know these stories in advance. Okay, I'm Maddie. Um, my main discipline is gravel riding. Before joining Team Spectre, I was working in the city um, at quite a tough financial firm and working like really long hours. It would be really silly to keep working this job that I'm not really necessarily enjoying. With the job, I couldn't ride at all. So my only riding was 5.30 a.m. getting on my bike, cycling to the office as a commute. And I was missing the thing I loved most. So handing in my notice, I suddenly had this feeling of, oh, in a month's time, I can just get on my bike. And I think that moment of relief as I handed it in was just overwhelming. Naturally, I'm a very competitive person, which is probably how I ended up in the career path that I was in. And I'd say that that transfers really well to sport. I've always had that edge within me, and that's what led me down that kind of competitive career path. And hopefully now I can put that energy into my sport.
ethnicity, I still don't know if I'm really I'm good enough to go all in on cycling. I think that that like the imposter syndrome within cycling is a huge thing, and I think I constantly reflect and go, "Am I actually good enough to properly pursue this?" My main decision upon pursuing it was just general life happiness. Will I be happier riding my bike and training and focusing on that for a bit? Yes. Imposter syndrome. I personally think it's more of a female thing. I think. With the women that I ride with, a lot of the time, everyone feels like they're slightly out of place or they're not quite good enough. And I think it's because we don't vocalise when we're struggling. There's definitely a feeling of, you can't say, oh, I'm finding this a little bit harder because you don't want to seem weaker than other people. And then you feel like you're the slow one, but actually everyone's having a hard time. And it's just about being honest with each other and admitting where your own faults lie. Imposter syndrome is a weird one. Everyone, ha I think everyone has it, honestly. Cycling in general, not necessarily the competitive side of it, but being able to cycle is really important in my life. So the idea that I could crash out and be so injured that I can't train would be absolutely gutting. And I actually sometimes reflect and go, I actually don't know what I would do in my life without cycling. Sometimes I question, what do normal people do on the weekend? What would I actually do? And I'm sure I'd find another hobby. The, only, the other thing I do like doing is cooking, so I guess I would have to just become a chef. I basically only started riding about four years ago, just under four years ago. And I borrowed a bike and was convinced to enter the Grinjero race. And I came third that year for my age group, which really surprised me. And then over lockdown, the only thing I could really do was cycle. So I would spend all day, every day cycling. And I'd bought a gravel bike off the back of that race, kind of as a joke. I said, if I podium, I'll have to buy a bike for the saddle because the prize was a saddle. And I just got, I got a lot more confident and I had a friend who was really good technically. So I'd always follow his wheel. And then I decided to enter Grandura again because I was like, do you know what? I want to see how good I've got. And then I ended up, yeah, just winning the women's for my age group section. And it was so much fun. It was, and I think it was really, also really satisfying just to see how much I'd improved. I actually did buy the bike because of the saddle. What's with the necklace? What's with the necklace? Style and speed. What do I bring? I'll put out the watts and sit on the front for a bit and then tell them, they'll tell me what to do and then gain experience and then I'll put down, I'll put down the watts, yeah. 4.50 for 20 minutes, something like that. That was testing just after off season. So coach is saying get a bit more on that by the end of the season. So I want to try and get up to 500 watts for 20 minutes, which is, I haven't seen many, haven't heard many people talk about that. So it'll be like a, Nice little milestone saying, yeah. I'm six foot six, so it's just like, the watts per kilo are impressive, but this sort of, the size of the number is, so. I think my, my parents didn't mind what I did, as long as I was having fun. Uh, but grandparents were quite academic. They were a bit shocked when I said, I'm not going to uni. Um, I want to live at home and ride my bike. But if you start not pulling your weight at home, then yeah, pay a rent or get kicked out, I think was the idea. I can't see where I'm going to stop. So if I just keep working, then I don't think I will stop. <laughs> if I can make this what I do for a living, then that's the dream. That's what I'm working for. So if, if you didn't have cycling, what would you have? Some other extreme sport, windsurfing or snowboarding or some adventure sport. Is don't think, adrenaline? yeah, adrenaline junkie. Maybe a product tester. I seem to break bikes pretty quickly. And I, I, I dreamt of being a team. I didn't know if I didn't know it'd come at 18, and it's a pretty solid team to be on at 18. There's not too many teams that bring you out to Calpe and give you a week of training and support you all the way. And well, Spectra does that. Well, I had a quite an off, a quite a nice off season. Caught with some mates. Maybe drank a little bit too much, but I'm 18. I can do that. Most of my mates from school went to uni. I'm not worried. Uni is always there. I always go. I think maybe I've missed out now, but I'm pretty sure I'll catch up. I was definitely ready for a break, and a break with a bike is a better break than any. If I'm going to say I want something, I will 
give it my all. My name's Amira Mella. I am a cyclocross and road rider. It's like the last lap I will take more risks and I probably will take corners faster than maybe I'd like sometimes, I think. And that, that is the risk of crit racing, I guess. Like, will it pay off or, or not? Oof. <laughs> but I need to build a bit of confidence on some road races, yeah, before I before I ride off the front. <laughs> I think most people still look at me as a cross rider. And I think I did have quite a strong cross season, so I think, especially after that, like people will still look at me as predominantly aiming for cross, but I kind of want to broaden it a little bit and do like a full road season. Yeah, I kind of want to establish myself a bit more on the road this year. If I put my mind to something, I'm going to work hard it is. I don't half commit to anything. I'm probably more likely to not commit at all than half commit. So I'm, I'm kind of always been an all or nothing person, which sometimes is good and sometimes doesn't work in my favour. If I'm going to say I want something, I will give it my all. Most people don't make it, I feel like. And I feel like if you're so focused on that, like I have in the past, you almost don't enjoy everything you're getting along the way. Like there's so much more to cycling than just kind of making it, like most people think. And who says that? <laughs> um... I think, yeah, I think I can be perceived as very serious, especially on race day, like, and yeah, maybe people perceive me as a bit, a bit serious, but for me, that's just, that's just who I am. It's part of my personality and that's kind of how I get the best out of myself. Sometimes I find if I'm too relaxed, it, I just, just like lose concentration. It makes me hard work and determined. I think it's sensible to be nervous about crashing basically. I'm Mikey Mottram, I'm riding road and gravel. I've I had a couple of crashes over the few years that I've been cycling. I had my collarbone fixed, which is something I've been to do for a while. Um, and just unfortunately the surgery went, didn't go as well as it should have done. The wound didn't heal properly. Four weeks ended up being about five months or so. It, it, it was really frustrating and you know you're looking at it every day like is it doing all right is it doing all right and all of a sudden they're like no you, you're in surgery tomorrow basically it, it was like that bad and um, yeah that was kind of the most upset I've been about sort of missing missing a race because it was a bit of a downer but kind of I was like right pick myself back up get out for this I picked myself back up and then to be like no you can't I was, that, that, that was a bit of a blow. The next surgery went fine. Actually, I'm up, I'm up for this now, you know, you kind of, all right, I've missed all that, all that lot, but there's the stuff ahead. When you have something like that, you have to, you always just put that extra little bit of focus in your conditioning, everything, and like everything you're doing. Given how bad that year has been, all in all sort of thing, doing some power tests, I was like, I'm not far off. I think I'm quite an aerobic athlete, so I've got a bit of, you know, that sort of engine. I'm not a massive, I've got a massive sprinter, not, but I can go hard for a long time. And I think with that comes in hand in hand with a bit of mental robustness. Because it's that sort of effort, you then also have that, that sort of robustness and, right, get out, we're going to get on with this. The result does matter, but if you've done everything and you've prepared right, then you're like, I can I can walk away happy with that. It's hard to put a finger on what this place here is a success, this place here is not a success because there's so many nuances and variants in cycling. You just watch it, you know, you can be that side or that side, that side your race is over, that side you go on and win sort of thing. It's about making the right decisions at the right time and using using what you've got at the right time then you know you've kind of you've done what you can and to me that's that's success as opposed to I've won this sort of thing. I think it's sensible to be nervous about crashing basically. If everyone wasn't nervous about crashing then the peloton would be a worse place to be because everyone would ride a bit more risky. If we're sat here now and we're saying I want to target this race in May, June, whenever time, there's no point in then not preparing for that. You know, you need to be looking at you need to be looking at the course maps. When you get there, you go, well, that corner there, that turns into a crosswind. We all need to know where to be then. And I think it's learning, 
quite how prepared you have to be and those moments in a race where everything everything can happen because a race can be so long and then all of a sudden there's 10 seconds where everything happens so I think preparation and that's not you know the fancy things that's not the leg rubs the things like that that's just looking at a road book and working out where you need to be where at the right time and that's so much about cycling being right place right time sort of thing because you can be the strongest guy there and spend the whole time 100 meters off the back and you know that's no good because like that's not how cycling works at times i fell out of love with racing in a bunch particularly i'm always going to be a bit nervous about crashing and i don't think that's an embarrassing thing to say because it's it's not nice and the older you get almost the more scared you get of it you know my wife jokes that i'll be there at you know 90 or kind of still going out riding my bike because i do i do love riding my bike you know someone someone will say oh what do you want to do kind of in the bike well it'd be great to win the lottery so i can just you know, ride my bike each day sort of thing wouldn't it but it's a great sport and just there's so many so many avenues and different kind of directions you can go in like it's fantastic to just get out there Oh, good question. Yeah, so I'm Bex Durrell, mainly race road, but this year I'm mixing it up a bit. It's a bit of a kind of, um, not, I wouldn't like to call it a comeback, but I'm returning to racing after a couple of years. Sometimes I still question it. I'm like, can I actually do this? You know, as a new mum, you think, oh, like, will, will people think I can't race anymore? I'm a bit past it. But yeah, they kind of showed that they had faith in me and, you know, they'd like me to be part of the team. So it was really nice. My little one wanted to pursue cycling. I'd be really chuffed. I'd like to think I had a little part to play in that, maybe. <laughs> but yeah, I'd support him 100% because it's such a great sport. You meet so many people. You get to travel to some pretty cool places um, and have loads of fun on the way. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, cycling's tough, but anything that, you know, you, you have high aims for and you have kind of quite lofty goals, anything's going to be tough. And I think it's um, cycling can be such a great lesson in life of how to pursue something, have discipline, um, really learn your craft as well and um, see what you can achieve and yeah try and do your best so it's a challenge but it's worth it. My expectations for this year they're definitely measured um, I don't know whether um, I have the fitness to definitely win it but that's the beauty of being in a team it's not all about individuals there might be another girl in the team that can win it and if I play a part in that to help the success then you know it's a win for everybody. You reevaluate your life and you think what can I achieve now is it maybe time to do something else I think every new parent questions that it's like a natural crossroads in life um, but you know here I am I've decided to kind of give it another crack and see where it gets me. Making it as a cyclist um, do you know what, I've, I feel like it, I kind of, I'm, I'm already there, I'm enjoying it, I'm having fun, I'm lucky enough to you know, race in some of the UK's biggest races, get to race abroad as well, so I think I'm here. <laughs> what can I do for you? You don't have any carbon wheels in the van, do you? Yes. Can I eat some? I suppose so. <laughs> yes. Uh, bring your bike up, tricky down there. I'll sort of tell. I own the team with Bruce, and we started the team around about uh, probably around two years ago now. Um, and I take a role of sort of an operational side of things, along with mechanics as well. I've always always known because I come from a cycling background myself, and I was always very heavily supported. Um, but I always have, have witnessed women in cycling and, and younger girls as well who are so much better than than i would have ever been but they haven't been able to get the support and as soon as we we wanted to do a team we were very strict on making it 50 50. Um, they all get exactly the same equipment all get the same kit all get the same treatment um, and yeah it's, it's the best way to be as far as i'm concerned bruce sort of had the idea and spoke to to the people at wiggle and was able to put something together and I was able to bring the infrastructure from Vitas Pro Cycling. We came up with this idea of, of shaking up cycling, which we've said an awful lot. And one of the things that I've always said, and it, it gets frowned upon sometimes, but I, I personally like it, is road cycling is inherently boring. Road racing is boring. Yeah, and it's not something people like watching, unless it's the Tour de France or something incredibly high end. We wanted to do something completely different. And that was always what it was. And that's not let us down at all, having that, that attitude towards it. One of my biggest personal goals is to just be able to support riders and actually get them to achieve things that, that they otherwise wouldn't have done or otherwise would have struggled with. There was a really touching moment last year 
where she, she crossed the finish line with one of her best results and ran into her dad's arms crying. And as far as I'm concerned, I'd take that any day over, over a UCI qualification. It, as long as we can do that, I'm very happy. What's it like working with Bruce? Interesting. So yeah, there's disagreements, as there's always going to be. Um, but at the same time, we do, we do bounce off each other and we do end up coming up with some really, really strong ideas. I take an incredibly small amount from the team. They take an awful lot from me time-wise. And if I didn't love it, I would have walked away after the first week. But I absolutely love the people. I love the team. And I love the opportunity that I can give a rider who otherwise wouldn't ride. Um, sounds a bit of a cliche, but it's sort of being able to provide something that I wish I'd had when I was a 19-year-old rider like Ben is. I do love it. Hate it at the same time, but also love it to bits. And it is, it is incredible. And I'm incredibly proud of what we've achieved. And I don't think we're even 15% there yet. There is many, many sleepless nights and, and many sort of very tense conversations that we have to have to try and make this work. And it's a huge responsibility, I feel scared regularly. I actually have one little bit that's, that's gonna, that she should have, and I haven't really said this before. Maybe it's because I wasn't driven enough, maybe it was because I wasn't hungry enough or wasn't training enough, or maybe it's just because I didn't have the genetics and that was just what it is. But I love racing, I love riding my bike. But I take great pride in being someone who never made it, being good at this. Honestly, I still don't know if I'm really I'm good enough to go all in. If I can make this what I do for a living, then that's the dream. That's what I'm working for. If I put my mind to something, I'm going to work hard. It is. I don't half commit to anything. If you've done everything and you've prepared right, then you're like I can I can walk away happy with that. Anything that you know you you have high aims for and you have kind of quite lofty goals, anything's going to be tough. If I can't make something happen. It, it no longer lets down just me, it lets down 20 people and that is huge.